Mix, knead, rest, shape, rest, bake. It's the standard process for a straight yeasted bread dough recipe. We're gonna take away the knead, lengthen the rest slightly, and fill the gap <laughs> with something else. Roll it! Oh, hey, home bakers. I talk a lot about the peace and the pleasure that I get out of kneading my own bread dough at home. But what if in that moment it feels like you haven't got time? What if physically you can't do it? What if you just can't be bothered? I hear you cut to the table. This example is a straight white bread dough, flour, water, salt, and yeast. Mix it well in the bowl and then leave it alone. Dust it, cover it, let it rest. Kneading is a key part of bread making. It develops the strength in the dough. That's key principle number two in my book, Bread Every Day. Your dough needs to be strong so that when the yeast gets to work, the dough can hold all the gas it produces and puff up. Strength is key. But there is something else that develops strength in your bread dough, and that thing is time, key principle. Number four, it's not the only thing that time brings to the party, but it is one of the things. Now, normally, had we kneaded our bread dough, we would leave it to rest and puff up for 60 to 90 minutes. It puffs up, then we shape it, then it puffs up again, and then we bake it. So if we're not gonna knead it and instead let time do the work, well, then we can just leave it to the end of the scale, like 90 minutes, and then we wouldn't have to do anything at all, and time would do all the work for us, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, but kind of no. Because there's something else that we need to do along the way that will greatly improve our results at the end. Stretching and folding the dough traditionally, or how I like to do it, rolling it up, every once in a while at intervals throughout that resting period helps the dough to create the structure and the tension it needs, greatly improving the dough's ability to hold the gas, therefore puff up, therefore create nice and light bread without kneading. And that's the aim, isn't it? Yes. So after you have mixed your bread dough, popped it in the bowl for its 90 minute rest, you're gonna set a timer for 30 minutes and that's when you're gonna come back. When it beeps, turn your dough out of its bowl onto the table, flatten it with fingertips and knuckles and roll it up one way into a sausage. Flatten it again and roll it up the other way, nice and tight. A little cup and turn and pop it back in your bowl for another 30 minute rest. After this second 30 minute rest, you're gonna repeat exactly the same thing again, turning it out onto the table, rolling it up one way and rolling it up the other way. And each and every time you do this, you'll notice that that raggedy weak dough that you started off with becomes more strong, more bouncy, more elastic, and much more responsive and smooth. And that is what we're looking for. Put it back in the bowl for another 30 minute rest, and then we've hit our 90 minute mark. We've built the tension and structure along the way. Time has built its strength and together we have created a dough perfect and ready for its final shape, puff and bake. This footage that you're seeing here, by the way, is from the Bake With Jack online course platform that I'm building at bakewithjack.co.uk. This no need to cheesy back recipe is one of the recipes you'll find there on launch day and I hope you really like it. It's gonna be called uh, the rather cleverly named Home Bakers Club. It's gonna be a place for you to be able to bake with me in your kitchen at home as if I'm there doing it with you. If you want notifications when it goes live or depending on when you watch this, if it already has gone live, I'll leave a link underneath and you can go and have a look for yourself and check it out. So take a look at these cheesy baps. Yummy, light, fluffy, soft baps. Massive win without even kneading. I could have made them in the traditional way, following that formula from before, uh, but I didn't. Instead, we tweaked it to suit us and they are great success, leading me to believe that any other bread following a similar formula can be turned into a no knead bread in this way. So if you're trying this at home, here are a few pointers for you. Remember the example I'm using here is a straight yeasted bread dough following that all important process. Mix, knead, rest, shape, rest, bake. Any recipe following that formula with a similar hydration will likely work out the same way, even if it's enriched dough. And it's not the same with sourdough, but then my sourdough recipe is no need anyway, isn't it? So 
a little extra water or liquid in your recipe is helpful here because gluten develops better in a more liquid environment and it also helps with the next point I'm about to make. Mix your dough up really well in the first place. Since we're not relying upon needing to get everything thoroughly combined, make sure it's mixed well in the first place. If you're using fresh yeast or that dry granule yeast, make sure you dissolve it completely in the water to give it best chance of mixing through the bread dough evenly. And if you're using the fine powder, easy, fast action yeast, whatever it's called that I normally use, you can pop that in the flour to avoid clumping up in water. You gotta make sure everything is fully combined because throughout the rolling up, there's not a lot of force to make sure that happens if you hadn't done it in the first place. Rolling up at the 30 minute mark across a 90 minute period is an idea, not the rule. You might wanna shorten the rest to an hour and fold up every 50 minutes or you might wanna lengthen it uh, to two hours and fold it up every 30 minutes an extra time. You'll get more rolls in that way. Then they will likely be stronger and more stretchier and more able to puff up even bigger. Follow the principles and have a play to see what works for you. We can make amazing bread at home without needing. I hope this video has helped you to see that and given you the confidence to do what works for you without any judgment from me. I promise. Don't forget the Home Bakers Club is coming soon. If you wanna be a part of it and you wanna be among the first to hear about it, sign up in the description box underneath. I really hope you like it. I'm working really hard on it, trying to make it something really special. And I really hope that you like it. And I'm gonna stop going on about it now, I promise. But I will remind you in every single video until the launch, so you don't forget. If it's already up and running, by the time you're watching this video, then come and check it out and see what we're up to. Next time, we're gonna compare the characteristics of a bread that's been kneaded with one that hasn't been kneaded to see if there are any clues, anything we can learn from the final bread that tells us exactly what's been going on in our process. I look forward to seeing you then very soon for another one. Bye-bye. Oh, that's the wrong camera. <laughs> See ya.